Hello you multi. Um, meager, maniacal, malt mentioners. And thank you to Wadu. Uh, that's W A D E W 5110. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and translate that. But thank you to Wado, right? Oh, I did translate it, for the mock mention. I'm Ralphie and welcome to my channel, ralphie.com, where I review whiskies and other quality spirits and generally just talk about them and um, hopefully just share my experience to help you gain your experience. And uh, this is Ralphie Review 1001 Extras, in which I'm actually going to talk about what I'm doing next with this bottle of Glen Breton 10 year old Canadian single malt whiskey from Nova Scotia. Uh, because I've bought this once before back in 2008. Yeah, that's quite a long time ago. And in 2009, at the end of January, I, I recorded a short review of my original bottle of 10 year old Glen Breton because I was really curious to try a Canadian whiskey, which I'd never come across before, but it only just become available in, in Britain, in the British market, through a London online spirits retailer who were basically fairly new uh, because the internet was fairly new, but they, rather than being a traditional retailer, they were selling online and you could buy online and you could pay online and get it delivered offline by post. Really practical good idea. And although I continued to buy whiskey at local specialist whiskey shops in Glasgow, I really liked the fact that in the online shops you could find the unusual stuff that there was very little demand for but it was definitely out there somewhere and the online retailers were very good at an early stage in making that available and it included the early bottle of Glen Breton or Glenora 10 year old single malt from Glen Breton distillery or from Glenora distillery I can always get the two confused but it doesn't really matter to be honest I'm not one of these people that gets pedantic about the absolute stickler for detail because Detail can get often get lost in opinion uh, and facts can get lost in hand-me-down opinions which are presented as facts but they're not quite facts but they're accepted as facts. So there were the first bottle I opened it it was different it definitely wasn't like a scotch whiskey it was it had its own signature its character and at that point I discovered that there was an attempt by the Scotch Whiskey Association to get this distillery to change its name and not call itself Glen Anything. So if it could call itself Canadian Maple Leaf Distillery, that would have been fine. But there again, you know, do you have Scotch Whiskey Distilleries calling themselves Scotland Heather and Scotland Thistle Distillery? and calling the brand Scotland Thistle to save confusion? No, of course you don't. Absolutely you don't. Because people are smarter than that. And people are given credit for being smarter than that. Thank goodness. But the first bottle I bought, um, it took me a while to, to finish it. It was an occasional dram when I was in the mood for something different from scotch. So it took me about eight months to finish the last bottle. But I'm more experienced now and I've got access to a lot more whiskey now. So how long am I going to have this bottle? How long will it last? Now bear in mind, I've opened this in 2023. In September 2023 to be exact. And I've had a few small drams from the bottle, but not actually that much. Now, first and foremost, I know that if I store this bottle away from direct sunlight in a cool environment with no significant fluctuating temperature with the cork firmly on, it's going to last and preserve absolutely fine. 
the higher the alcoholic strength and the younger the whiskey, the more it is likely to remain intact for longer and not oxidize and go flat. It tends to be your fragile old single malts bottled at a lower strength and particularly when they're chill filtered and have E150 caramel colour added. They don't tend to last very long in storage because basically they've been stripped of the substance um, during the filtration process. So the alcohol is weakened as a result of its ability to hold on to flavours long term in the presence of oxygen. Uh, and I know some people will say, oh, Ralphie's got his fanciful opinions and Ralphie's wrong. And, um, but, you know, don't take my word for it. Find out for yourself. You'll notice over time. Um, and, and by the way, don't pay too much attention to experts, really. This bottle I expect to last me five years. I've enjoyed a wee dram from it now. It's very nostalgic. Um, although I had finished the last bottle nine years ago, um, I immediately recognised the signature of the whiskey because it's it's absolutely identical to last time round, all that time ago. I could see it immediately. The, our memory banks are very good at storing that information in detail. And it's a really good, in fact, this one's better than the last time round. Uh, because simply the distilleries get more experience making its own product. And the people making the product have more experience. And it really shows. And another thing is they've never changed the branding. This is basically an identical bottling to the last one um, 14 years ago. And it's, I find it very refreshing that you've got single malt distilleries out there who feel no pressure and do not see any need to repackage, represent, rebrand, relaunch, re re this, that, or whatever their product every three or four years in completely different packaging. It's lovely to actually have some continuity over time. And this is something that's lacking in Scotch whiskey, to be honest, with certain brands, and it diminishes them. It makes them less valuable and less wanted. It's as simple as that. But of course, it certainly makes money for people in offices who are involved in design and imagineering and labelling and all the rest of it. It keeps people in work, I suppose, and that's why they do it, first and foremost. This is a delightful whisky. I won't be rushing it. It's many decades ago that, that the old culture insisted that you never drank in your own, you opened a bottle with friends and you <coughs> threw away the cork because you'd never need to seal the bottle again because if, if you did it meant you were a miserable host and ungenerous. And then everybody would get pished and then, then everybody would generally talk crap. Um, and that's what you got. That's, to be honest, a wee bit of Highland hospitality. There would be a bit of good cheer and all the rest of it. At some point, particularly in large gatherings, whether funerals or weddings, at some point an old, uh, an old wound would be rubbed and there'd be a fist fight, generally about half past eleven out in the car park, um, in which to which nobody was invited but everybody was aware that was happening, apart from the oldest of the ladies. It's tradition. It always has been and it generally will be. But times have changed and this is a keeper. I know that in the right conditions, and I can provide the right conditions, the signature and the smell coming from this glass is going to last intact for probably 10 years, if not longer. Um, I'll find out in the fullness of time. But now and again, I'll come back and I'll have a wee dram from this bottle. And I'll have it side by side with a wee dram from another bottle. Because there is absolutely no rush to finish a bottle of whiskey. None at all. And the old sentiment that you can't open a new bottle of whiskey till you've finished the old one and buried it with, 
with honours and dignity and all this fla vacuous flannel, it no longer applies. And it's certainly not the case where you drink this whisky because you're an alcoholic and you just want to be a wee, a wee bit mar up market about it. I mean, you've got the op option if you want malt mix, if you're an alcoholic. And I mean, I'm aware that when I lived in Glasgow, I lived very close to the West End, and in one of the local wine shops, uh, they used to have bottlings of 15-year-old Glengarry. And it was done up in a kind of tartan cardboard tube uh, and very nicely packaged and it wasn't too expensive. And there was a local retired academic from Glasgow University used to go in every day around about 11 o'clock in the morning and buy a bottle of this whiskey um, five days a week. And he would go home, he would consume it all and he'd come back the following day for another bottle. He was an upmarket alcoholic. And you'll find that there are upmarket up alcoholics out there. They may be wine aficionados um, who are nosing and tasting and swirling and spitting and then swirling and not spitting and then swirling some more and using great big goblets because they're good for nosing but they're also good for hiding the volume of whis volume of wine you're consuming and do you know the, the, they, they, they talk the talk, they walk the walk and they mix with a social certain kind of company which gives consent to their overconsumption of alcohol without question and without judgment and what they'll do is they know where the limits are so they'll go home at the end of a, a wine evening at a taxi home or a member of the family will drive them home they'll disappear to the back room and then they'll have that final whole bottle of wine that just tips them over the edge into oblivion um, and that's what they do that is the, this is your upmarket alcoholic you're alcoholic in denial because they have this theatre that they've created around it to justify it, excuse it and deny it. Um, whereas for the modern informed whisky drinker, the more we can show the opened bottles in our collection, the more we can show our living library, our growing archive, the more we show that we that we own the whiskey and the whiskey doesn't own us. So don't have any qualms about keeping an open bottle and continuing to keep an open bottle uh, because it will last for years unless you leave it in direct sunlight or a particularly hot environment or a particularly hot and cold environment where the, the temperature and the atmospheric pressure is fluctuating violently because what that does is it causes the air inside the bottle to expand and contract and expand and contract and as it does so it exudes air out through the seal and brings air in through the seal because whiskey stops do not hermetically 100% seal whiskey. That's virtually impossible, particularly over time. I hope you found this useful. My final conclusion is, how long, how long am I going to keep this? Well, I may well come back to this in 10 years and give you an update. 10 years, an open bottle in my stash. I don't see it as a problem. I don't want you to see it as a problem. Uh, follow, follow my experience. Um, and hopefully, you, you will try it out for yourself and see how you get on. Never be afraid to, to risk a few bottles of whiskey in the pursuit of academic research. Cheers. Mm. Just to let you know, um, there's ongoing celebrations of my 1000th whiskey review. From the 6th to the 11th of November 2023, I will be hosting an art show in the Good Spirits Company in Bath Street in Glasgow. 
I'll be book signing. I will be co-hosting a whiskey auction, vintage whiskey tasting with Scotch whiskey auctions. And also I'll have Springbank special guests for a warehouse, Springbank warehouse tasting on Friday the 10th of November. On the 11th of November I'm the special guest at Glasgow's Whiskey Festival. If you're there, I'll see you there. And during that week, um, it will not be unusual to see me in the Good Spirits Company Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, having a wee dram and uh, enjoying a pint of Whiskey Chaser, which is a, a cask conditioned ale that I have created to be sold behind the bar of the Bon Accord and only the Bon Accord in North Street Charing Cross, Glasgow during the week of the first week of November leading up to Glasgow's Whiskey Festival and all the profits from the sale of that beer will go to the local Glasgow Food Bank in Drum Chapel. All the proceedings from the sale of my art which is specifically to commemorate 1000 whiskey reviews, signed art, A3, pictures on the canvas, all, all that money is going to the food bank because I want to appreciate how much Glasgow's done for me and my whiskey journey by giving a little bit back to those in Glasgow today who really need our support. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe if you need to. Leave a comment if you want to. And remember, I've got a Patreon channel as well, so I'll maybe see you there. Bye bye.